Yellowstone National Park. The hydrothermal features are a delight to children and adults. But the heat source for those hydrothermals is far larger and older than Yellowstone National Park. Imagine a lava lamp, a plume of hot material coming from deep, deep inside the earth. A hot spot coming from as deep as the boundary between the core and the mantle. This ancient hot spot reaches the surface today at Yellowstone National Park. In the western part of the United States, in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and northern Nevada, are huge, huge basalt flows. Basalt is a type of rock that comes from deeper in the earth. It's an igneous rock or volcanic rock, and it has flowed over those states, creating the Columbia River flood basalts. Here at Steens Mountain, the flood basalts have been exposed because of faulting, and we can see layer after layer after layer of basalt, all products from the Yellowstone hotspot. In northern Nevada, we find calderas. Calderas produce rhyolite. Rhyolite is another kind of igneous or volcanic rock that comes from closer to the surface and tends to be more explosive, forming calderas. Calderas are huge holes in the ground, if you will, where the pressures and intense stickiness of that rhyolite causes gigantic explosions, leaving these scars in the earth. They come all the way up the Snake River Plain as the North American plate has moved across the hot spot, we find these caldera. Here we are vo viewing the Bruno Jarbage explosive site and look at all those layers of volcanic material. In the Snake River Plain, we see age progressive volcanism, meaning that as the North American plate has moved across the hot spot, the volcanoes get younger and younger as we approach Yellowstone. And there's younger volcanism too in the Snake River Plain, but that's a, another story for another day. As we reach Yellowstone, there are three major calderas. And you can see remnants of those calderas to the west of Yellowstone National Park. These are massive, massive explosions. One about 2.1 million years ago, one about 1.3 million years ago, and the most recent here in Yellowstone, about 640,000 years ago. Those were rhyolitic explosions, leaving calderas in the earth. Here we see the Yellowstone caldera. And when you drive into Yellowstone National Park, you're actually entering the caldera of a supervolcano. But don't worry, we have many, many monitors, seismographs, looking at Yellowstone all the time to make sure that you are safe there as a visitor. And you can watch those real time at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. There have been smaller eruptions, this one at West Thumb about 174,000 years ago, creating a smaller caldera. But these large calderas are major, major eruptions covering most of the western United States in volcanic material. We look at Yellowstone Canyon. What a beautiful, beautiful site. And the colors are created by hydrothermally altered rock. So these hydrothermals are powered by the magma that's underground created by the hot spot. So we can see lots of hydrothermal features and that water seeps deep into the earth when it rains and snows, comes in contact with the hot material under the ground and starts to rise back toward the surface, a process that can take hundreds of years. Yellowstone is an unusual volcanic system 
because it's connected to a hot spot, most volcanoes are connected to the movement of tectonic plates on the Earth. Hot spots are relatively rare, so what a gem Yellowstone National Park is, where we could see a different kind of geologic process in action. <laughs>